YouTube, what is good? So I love making videos where I inspire y'all. I love creative videos. I love going out to do photography. But one of my favorite things about having this YouTube channel is being able to make videos where I learn something and then pass the information along to you and make your life easier as creative professionals, people who want to start making money or make a career out of their craft. Now, I think back to when I first started photography and I had so many questions. I didn't know how to do anything. And over the years, I've had to learn it. So anytime I make a video where I can pass this information along to y'all, I feel really good afterwards. I'm not going to lie. And today's video is one of those videos. I'm going to show y'all how to build an online store for your photography. So you can sell prints, you can sell digital products like presets, you can sell video LUTs, you can sell basically anything you want. You can make merch like I'm making, and that is actually what inspired this video. So earlier this month, I launched my first company, 1826. 1826 is the year of the first photo, and the idea behind this brand is to create a brand that is rooted in cameras and photography, but can be worn and appreciated by basically anyone. It's not like super in your face, but there's definitely a message and a meaning behind the products for the people who are into photos and into creative things. It's kind of like skateboard brands. You can wear the skateboard brand if you want, but if you don't know the real meaning behind the brand, you're not really in it, you're kind of a poser, but you can get away with it. That is the idea of my brand 1826. And I've been building a website for 1826 that is completely different than my photography website, evanramp.com. Basically, evanramp.com is designed to be an extension of me. It's basically a website to showcase me as an artist that also has a store attached to it. So I wanted to make a website that was just strictly e-commerce based because I know a lot of you out there want to do the same thing. So this video is part three of an ongoing series that I have with Squarespace where we break down these types of internet Internet, e commerce, business sides of photography. The first one was where I showed you how to build that photography site, evanramp.com. The second one was where I showed y'all how to build a portfolio page or a basic portfolio website. In today's video, we're utilizing one of the brand new e commerce based web templates that Squarespace has to offer. It is fantastic. It looks so professional. I can't wait to show y'all how to build this site. If at any point in the video you want to sign up or you want to give it a shot, you can head over to squarespace.com slash evanramp and you can start a free trial or you can use code evanramp to get 10% off when you do sign up and make your first purchase. You know, obviously Squarespace is the sponsor of today's video. They sponsored a lot of videos on my channel, but it's such an organic partnership because this information is no different than the information I'd be giving you if they weren't a sponsor. And that's one of the reasons I love working with them. I'd be using Squarespace to build 1826.com and evanramp.com because it's easy. I understand it. It makes sense to me. And I'm just sharing this information with you. So thank you Squarespace for sponsoring the video today. So realistically, this website should take you about one day to create. If you follow along with this video, you'll probably have to pause it a bunch, catch up. Then you got to go out and create any of the visual assets, which there's not a ton of. There's going to be a couple product shots you need. There's also going to be a couple, you know, like header type photos and other profile type photos, but nothing major. I think you'll probably need about eight or nine pieces of media to get the website done, and then you will be up and running. This website is minimal. It's clean. It's easy to use and easy to understand. And then from there, you can slowly add in things and keep building out the website. That's what I plan to do with 1826, but for now, we just got to get started. That is the key to all this. Honestly, that's why I launched 1826 earlier this month with really no promotion and didn't really talk about it very much. I just wanted to get it going, get the ball rolling and start that brand. And now I'm going to build it. And this website is one of the first steps. So let's jump on the computer. Let's get into it. Web design time. Yeah, I've never done I've never done like a transition into web design before, so I don't know don't know how to segue it. So this is where our website starts, the Squarespace home screen, and you're gonna go to the top right and go ahead and click get started, pretty obvious. And you're gonna be greeted with all these different templates you can pick from. Personally, I think you should go through these and see if there's any that stand out. But for today's video, we're gonna go ahead and start with online store, and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go start with the Almeida template. So we'll click start with Almeida. This is gonna bring up this prompt that has a bunch of tips on building your site. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to call this my photography store. And then we're going to go ahead and skip through these. But if you're building the site and you want to read them, by all means, go for it. They're helpful little tools that can help you build and figure out how the whole interface of Squarespace works. So we're going to click on pages on the left and we're going to go ahead and delete this lookbook page, hit the trash can button. We don't need it. It's not going to be part of our site today. And now that we're on the home page, we're going to click edit in the top left corner and we are going to go through and delete a bunch of sections that we won't be using today and all you do is click on the trash can remove section bang 
So to delete all those, we're going to scroll back to the top and delete this one as well. And we should just be left with the title and a text section. And we're going to click on that blue square right there. And it's going to bring up a bunch of sections we can add in. We're going to go ahead and use this one today because I think it looks great. It's a very strong starting home page when you enter the site. Going to click on this pencil icon over here on the left and we're going to adjust the size. You can go small, medium, or large. For me personally, I think medium is like the perfect sweet spot for this, but you can decide whichever one you want. You can also change the text. So we're going to click that plus sign one more time and now let's go through these sections. As you can see, there's a bunch of different options here. There's headline options, list options, gallery images. I'm probably eventually going to add a gallery section to my website on the home page. So if you want to add it, all you do is click that blue plus sign and browse through these. But for today's video, we're going to add this product one right here. It's a clean three piece product. And I think those two sections together look great. So we're going to go ahead and save this. Going to click edit once again, and we're going to start editing this section. So we click the pencil sign. We're going to go ahead and delete this current photo that's in there and we're going to add in our own new one. I think this photo looks fire. It's perfect for a print store and it's honestly just like changing your profile picture on social media. Now if you scroll down you can change the overlay opacity so I'm going to move it up just a little bit so the black overlay is a little bit stronger so the text can stand out. Highlight our text. We're going to go ahead and change it. I'm just going to put a placeholder in here of Evan Ramp and I'm going to add a placeholder down here below and I'm going to go over to the button, click the pencil, and I'm going to change the button to shop. All this is pretty straightforward. Any section that you want to change, you just click the pencil and that allows you to change what's going on. Now we're going to go ahead and scroll down and we're going to go ahead and highlight. Oops, I forgot to hit edit. We're going to highlight this section right here. I'm going to add in just copyright 2020. Going to go back up to pages. I'm going to click shop and then I'm going to click commerce. Now, once I do this, a prompt is going to pop up saying start selling with Squarespace. We're going to go ahead and click get started and we're going to go ahead and answer these questions really quick. Am I already selling? No, I'm selling art up to 10. You can answer this however you want to answer it. And now we are ready to edit this page. So we're going to click manage products and now we are going to go through and delete all these products that we don't need. This is a little bit tedious so I'm going to speed it up. We're going to delete down until we have three products left. Kind of breeze through that section but now that we have three products we're going to go ahead and click these little dots right here and we're going to click edit and from there we are going to delete the two photos to start with. We're going to retitle this to 10 by 10 print or something like that and we're going to click on edit for the variants. Now because this was a clothing template, there's a bunch of different sizing options which could work to your favor if you're doing multiple sizes of prints. You could size them differently here, but for today we're just going to start simple and we're just going to have one option available for this item and it's going to be the 10 by 10 that's listed in the title. So we're going to add in our weight right here which is important for shipping. We're going to add in the size or actually delete the size and we're also going to change the stock from unlimited to a limited stock depending on how many you have. And you can go ahead and add in your height and weight and everything for shipping. We're gonna go ahead right here and add in the photos that are gonna be used as like the thumbnails. We have one of the print itself and one of the side of the print. And that's looking good. I'm gonna add in a description down here, which is pretty straightforward as well. And I think that's it. We gotta go actually into some of these other settings right here and make sure we change some of the links in SEO. Yeah, there we go. So we're gonna go over here. We are gonna change this to a more basic link. So if you send someone a link to this, it's gonna say, whatever.com slash what you make up and we're going to change the thumbnail also to the thumbnail of the print and I think that looks perfect right here. We're going to click duplicate and we're going to do the exact same thing two more times with two other prints. So let's get through all that right here. Exact same process repeated over and over and now we have three prints on our website. That looks amazing. If you bring your mouse over it's going to show a quick view of what the side of the print looks like and now we can go ahead and delete these last two items. Kept those in there just in case we had any issues and we needed to save one later. What you could do also is you could make one of these items not visible so you have the template saved just in case you ever want to sell clothes or anything like that. But for now, we can go ahead and save and this is looking great. great. 
So we're gonna click on the pencil once again, our main design tool, and we're gonna change the thumbnails from three by four to a square. I just like a square better. And right here, you can adjust the spacing of everything depending on how you want it to look. I think it looks fine as a de default. So we're gonna click away, and we're gonna delete this lookbook section once again. And now our shop page is looking crispy clean, very simple and straightforward. Let's go ahead and save once again. Once we do that, we are back at our comment tab and we're gonna see some other things that we can get started on one is gonna be adding a payment I use stripe there's a bunch of different ones you can use you can read through and figure out what was gonna work best we'll go back to this commerce tab once again and now we'll click on choose how you're gonna ship you can add shipping options I'm gonna use weight is what I typically like to use so let's do an example we'll say United States got to actually spell properly. Uh, you're going to go and you're going to put in the price per weight. That's why it's important to put the weight of the print with the box. You can click on shipping zone over on the right and add in a shipping zone and bang. It's pretty straightforward and simple. So I like to use weight, but you can also use flat rate options. So let's say you want to ship to the rest of the world. You're not sure about the calculations, but you know something like $45 would cover the price of shipping to basically anywhere in the world, you can make that a flat cost and then every item added, you can say add an extra $4 or something like that. Shipping is one of those things that's gonna depend a lot about where you live, how big your item is, so I don't wanna to get too much into that, but that's how you add your shipping options right there. And also, you gotta choose a subscription plan to utilize all the commerce pieces of Squarespace. I believe the business is the most popular because of all the e-commerce tools that you get. You also have an advanced basic and a or a commerce basic and a commerce advanced. Um, so you can read through these and figure out what you think is going to work best for you. You can also pay monthly or pay annually. I've paid annually because it just saves you a little bit of money in the long run. So now that we've gone through everything with commerce, we should be able to actually start selling stuff on the site. So we're going to go back to our homepage right now and we're going to go ahead and edit through our homepage and make sure it's up to speed and ready to start working. So remember how we change this shop button we're going to click that pencil once again and we're going to go over to pages and we're now going to link that shop button to our shop page now that's one really cool thing that you can do with these buttons is add in a click through link we're actually going to do the exact same thing down here so we're going to click once again on the pencil we are going to drop in a new photo right here of one of our prints I think that looks good. We are gonna go ahead and delete the thumbnail name or whatever. We're gonna click on image, and down here on this drop down, there's gonna be an image link. We're gonna click on on image, gonna click the little gear box. We're gonna go to pages, and we are gonna drop in shop. Click save, so now if someone clicks on this, it will take them to the shop page. We're gonna go ahead and highlight planners right here. We're gonna delete this, and we are gonna change it to 10 by 10 prints. So now if someone comes to your homepage, they say, oh, 10 by 10 prints, they'll click it, they'll go to the shop. And we're gonna repeat this process again for another print. Now something really important to remember is when you click on a like title like this, you can highlight the title and you can click this little link button right here. You can actually create a link to a page on your site. So what we're gonna do is just like we did with the picture, we are gonna add a clickable link. So if they click on 12 by 18 prints, it sends them to the shop. We're going to do the same exact process once again for this last section right here. And now these three look great. They're complete and you can click on the photo and you can click on the text and it will take them to the shop. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down. We're going to click on this little uh, newsletter notification thing right here. It's going to go ahead and open up a, um, whatchamacallit, or we're going to click edit and then we're going to open up the edit page right here. We're going to click the pencil once again. And what we have to do to make this work is we got to add a storage option. So all we're going to do is click on this Squarespace mail campaigns. It's going to go to default. You can look through this and change it however you want. You can add in other things as well, but we're just going to start with a default. So if someone adds their email, it captures it in Squarespace and saves it to a directory for you. Now we are going to click edit and we're going to go ahead and quickly just knock out, um, or excuse me, actually, we're going to go ahead and do the header really quick. So what you can do with the header is you can add in a logo right here. We're not going to do one today because I don't have a logo 
logo for this fake site, but you can add one in. You can also change up the elements. You can change the links right here. So let's say you don't have a Twitter and you have a YouTube, you can click add in YouTube. You can type in the URL or whatever, and it's going to populate it with a link up in the top right next to where the shopping cart is. This is a great feature. It makes it really easy. So you don't like go out and find actual link icons or anything like that. Now, one really important thing that we can check on right here is once we go over to these pages, well, actually, hang on, let me show you something cool. So click on this icon right here and you can see how your website looks as a mobile website. So that's something if you go through and you want to check and say, how's my site looking? You can click that icon in the top left. You'll see how the mobile looks. As you can see, our clickable links are working. I think the site looks really good as a mobile site as well. So we're going to click on the about page. We're going to go ahead and click edit and we're quickly going to edit this about page. I'm going to click on the pencil once again, delete the photo, add in our own photo. We got some print images right here that look pretty cool. I'm not going to bore you guys with typing out a giant breakdown of like my about me. So I'm just going to fill these in with placeholders. We'll say, I don't know, premium products or something. And we'll delete this and we'll add in, I don't know, insert words or something like that. We'll add a placeholder in here for y'all, but definitely want to fill this out. So when people come to your site or if they happen to find you through search, they can get an idea of what you're all about. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the contact page, but we're going to spice up this contact page a little bit. Go ahead and click edit in the top left corner. And we're once again, going to go ahead and click on our blue cross right here and we are going to add in an image. So we're going to scroll down, check and make sure there's no sections we want to use, but I think image is the way to go. We're going to click on just one image right here and bang. So we're going to grab this. We are going to drop it in the middle. I actually think it looks better over on the left. You can just drag and drop and move the photo where you want. I think that looks really good. Let's go ahead and actually delete this text section that came with it. Delete that right there. Now we have the exact contact me page that came with the site, but we added a photo in. We'll delete the photo, add in our own image right here. I got this cool photo of my camera with the GoPro on. I think it looks really good. And bang, there we go. So remember, you're going to need a couple digital assets handy while you're building your site. But once again, contact us. We'll change it to something like complete the form on the right to contact us. Simple and straightforward. So now if people have issues with their prints or questions, they can get in touch with you this way. We're going to click the pencil sign on the contact us and we're going to go ahead and connect an email. Got to make sure you have an email connected to this. So if someone contacts you, they can send the email somewhere. So yeah, just add your email in there. Now we're going to save it. We're back to our home screen and we're just going to check our handiwork, make sure everything looks good. We're going to go ahead and click on shop. We're going to add one of these products to our cart really quick. Loving how this template has this cool like quick view so you can see the second image. Let's go ahead and add this five by seven red window print to our cart. It's going to pop into our cart up there. This looks perfect. So the site is functioning as it should. Maybe do a test checkout if you want, and then you can refund yourself. I've done that in the past. Now, one thing real quick we can check on is when you go over to design, you can go to fonts and you can actually change the size of the fonts throughout the site. You can also edit the particular fonts. Just wanted to include that in there because it's a little style thing that you should be aware of. But as of right now, our basic print shop site is now up and running and ready to go. And there we go. Told y'all that was going to be simple. That took like, what, 14 minutes. Now you have an online store that you can sell your prints. You can sell your presets. You can sell your LUT pack for video. You can sell merch. So big thank you to Squarespace once again for sponsoring today's video. Remember, if you want to build a website, you want to get started with a free trial, you can head over to squarespace.com slash Evan Ramp and you can use code Evan Ramp when it's time to purchase your first website. You'll save 10%. So shout out to Squarespace. Once again, they're the sponsor on today's video. Now, a few housekeeping notes and things that you can keep in mind when it comes to building this first site. The first thing is shipping. Who do you use to ship stuff? What should you use? How do you do it? This is something that you kind of just learn with trial and error. For me, at first, I would just hand write every address. I mean, I was getting a decent amount of order volumes, but this was a few years ago and I intentionally didn't go too crazy with trying to sell a ton of stuff because I wanted to learn the game, figure it out so down the line I could make videos like this one. But basically what I did to start is I just hand wrote everything. An order would come into Squarespace 
space, I'd see the order, I'd take the address, and I'd write it down. Now that's like the most basic way to do it. There's some other options out there for you. Now I use something called ShipStation, which is a completely different shipping software that plugs into Squarespace. So basically I have this other thing that I signed up for and paid for, and then I can integrate it into my Squarespace site. So as your order volumes go up, you can start looking into that. You can look up more information. And if you do have questions about it, hit me up on Twitter. I'd be glad to help y'all there. But another thing with shipping is when you're building that website, remember there was the section for the dimensions and the weight. You're going to want to weigh anything you're selling on the site beforehand in the box and in the packaging. So let's say you're selling a t-shirt or something and you're going to ship it in a mailer like this. You want to make sure that you get the weight of that in the website. So when it moves over to shipping software or when it's calculating shipping or however you have it set up, it knows what the weight is going to be. You don't want to just put the item weight because a box or something could weigh more. It could bump up the shipping, then it's going to cut into your profits. It's not good. Now, the last thing is the business of doing this yourself. Now, it's a debatable topic. I'm always open to hear what other people have to say about this, but in my opinion, most people give up too much control to other entities. They say, you know, I'm just gonna list all my prints on some website, and then the website sells them for you, and they keep a bunch of your money. It doesn't have to be like that. And also, as an artist, when you're selling something like prints, it feels much more personal to have it come from the actual artist, where it can be signed, where they know this person looked at this, they inspected it for quality. And the same thing goes with something like LUTs or something like presets. It's a much more meaningful experience for your customer to know that the place they're purchasing this is from the actual artist and individual as opposed to just this blanket service. That's a big reason why I built 1826 the way I did, why I'm starting from the ground up. It's not because it's easy, it's actually not easy at all. I'm having to build this website, I'm having to get all the shipping stuff together. The first launch was definitely a learning experience, but by doing it all myself, I control every piece of it. There were a bunch of hats actually that I got in from our supplier that had some minor errors on them and I had to send them back. Who knows if a service that I wasn't controlling would have caught that. And at the end of the day, that's a product that has my name on it. It has my sweat and my tears built into it that someone else is controlling and they're not quality testing. And then the customer service, they're contacting this other brand. They're not even contacting me. So take it or leave it. You can decide what's important to you. But for me, controlling everything myself and creating a real brand and an identity and a personal connection with the people who are purchasing things through my websites is what what's most important to me. So if you have any dreams out there, figure out a way to get started and make it happen because every day that passes is a day that you're not doing the thing that you hope to do. And that doesn't sit very well with me. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the thumbs up button if you did. Subscribe if you are not yet. Y'all are the truth. Thank you Squarespace once again for sponsoring the video. Everything you need is linked down below. See you next time.